This morning is a special morning in the life of our church. And now, you know, we like to think that every Sunday is a a special Sunday and a good Sunday to come together and worship. And each of those are special. There are uh, some days, of course, that are more special than others. Uh, The the special things that mark this day are a baptism, uh, communion, and the ordination and installation of our new class of elders to serve on the session. And now the baptism and the ordination and installation of new officers is happening at the 11 o'clock service, not this one, but uh, we are one church, even as we worship at different times and different places. So in a very real way, we are participating in those events as well because we are one body. This is also a special day in the life of the Church Universal because this Sunday, the first Sunday after Epiphany, is the day each year where we remember and we celebrate Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan, which is why we got uh, the story from Luke's Gospel this morning. And uh, because of that, our our scripture passages this morning point us directly to the thread that runs through and connects all of the stuff that is happening in our church this morning. And that thread is God's love for us and our identity in and through Him. As we look at our gospel passage, there are two elements of Luke's story that stand out. And the first is that baptism itself is really all about identity. The voice from heaven uh, is addressed to Jesus in the first person, and we, we heard it said, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Baptism teaches us who we are teaches us, reminds us that we are God's beloved children and confers upon us the promise of God's unconditional love and care. And this has always been true, of course, but in the times in which we live, I think this, this knowledge, this truth becomes even more important because many of the things that we have often used or traditionally used to help construct our identity, to help us understand who we are, are, are not as stable as they once were, and, or maybe they've been diminished. Uh, we change jobs and careers and addresses with more frequency than we ever had, uh, than we ever have in, in time. Our schedules, our routines, our friends, all of these things, they change and they evolve. And because of these changes, these, these things that we sometimes find our identity in and through, we might feel a deeper, stronger craving to find out who we really are. And in response to this craving, this need to know who we are, baptism reminds us that we discover who we are in relation to whose we are. And we are God's beloved children. We belong to God's family, and baptism is a tangible sign of that secure and unchanging identity. Baptism isn't only a sign of our identity as children of God, but also it is a reminder of the persistence of the Holy Spirit and the resistance of that Spirit against all of the forces that might work against God and God's will in this world. Baptism tells us that God knows us and names us in His love, and with that love, He shapes us. And this is the true sign, the true miracle that we need to recognize in the moment of baptism and and in our remembrance of that event, that God chooses you. God chooses us. 
God calls us his beloved children and calls us to live in the joy and in the hope and and in the peace that springs from his love. We are chosen by God to be empowered by his claiming of us and invited by that claiming to share in his love in the things that we say and in the things that we do. The second element from the gospel passage from Luke that I want us to think about this morning is that is that, that gospel tells us that it is the Holy Spirit of God that baptizes Jesus. And what I want us to know and understand and remember is that it is the same Spirit that baptizes us no matter who holds uh, the baby, no matter who sprinkles the water, it is the Holy Spirit of God that does the work of baptism. And because of that, it's not a little thing. Because of that, baptism is wholly and completely God's work. And because of that, we can have confidence that no matter how often we fall short, no matter how often we fail to do the things that we're supposed to do, No matter what we do, nothing can remove the identity that God conveys on us in and through baptism. Our relationship with God is the one relationship in our entire lives that we can't screw up. And it is precisely because we didn't have anything to do with it. This is a relationship that we can neglect, that we can deny, that we can run away from, that we can ignore. But nothing we do can destroy the claim that Christ has put on our lives. God loves us too deeply and too completely to ever let you go. And in a time when so many relationships are fragile or broken, it is an incredible source of comfort for me and I think for many of us uh, that this primary relationship remains solid and intact no matter what. And in fact, trusting that this relationship is in God's hands, it frees us to give ourselves wholly and completely to be empowered by God's claim on us. Because we can trust in God's love and care for us, we can pour out our love and care signs of God's presence in our lives on the ones that we encounter, on the people that we meet and have relationships with. Our gospel passage shows us a little bit of what this can look like lived out through our daily lives. Luke tells us in verse 15 that the people were filled with expectation. They were all questioning in their hearts. They were all wondering if they were questioning in their hearts. You know, they were talking about it to each other as well, about who John might be. Could he be the Messiah? And as sometimes happens here, the people are close to mistaking the messenger for the message. But, but John the Baptist clears things up when he says, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than me is coming. I'm not worthy to untie his shoelaces. It is a bold and a powerful statement. Because John is popular enough to draw a crowd, but as is often not the case, he is also honest enough to admit that he isn't the main attraction. John baptizes with water, but the one who is more powerful will baptize with something else. And John says what that something else is. He says, Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And if I'm being honest, that sounds a little terrifying, right? Holy Spirit and fire. But John's point seems to be that Jesus will have an awesome power, maybe more than we can understand, and that that power will be shared with us through baptism. Luke tells us that all of the people that were there that had come out to see John were baptized and that Jesus was baptized too, and that as the Holy Spirit descends upon him in the bodily form of a dove, and then we hear that voice again, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. It is this incredible moment of power and beauty as the Trinity is joined together in this brief scene. And in that moment, God affirms three things about who Jesus is. And the first is that Jesus Christ is God's son. And the second is that Christ is loved by God. And the third is that God is well pleased 
with Jesus. And what we need to understand, what we need to be reminded of as we hear these words and, and as we participate in the act of baptism is that in and through baptism, all, God makes all three of those affirmations about us as well. You are God's child. You are loved by God, and believe it or not, regardless of what you have done or left undone, God is well pleased with you. It is in and through baptism that our true identity as God's beloved children is spoken and established. And in recognizing who we are meant to be, who God has proclaimed us to be, that enables us to follow our part, to take up our role in God's work and mission in this world. Because like Jesus, we too are called to welcome all. We are called to serve others. We are called to follow in the way and the example of Jesus. Earlier this week, knowing what our topic uh, for this Sunday was, Keeley shared uh, a, a short video with me that connects uh, to the idea that John the Baptist embodied, uh, this idea of truly knowing who you are and your place and your call in this world. And the video discussed humility versus arrogance and confidence versus self-doubt. And it talked about these things in a, in a way that I hadn't thought of before. And the basic idea was that humility is understanding that you are not more than you are. And confidence is understanding that you aren't less than you are. And conversely, arrogance is thinking that you are more than you are, and self-doubt is thinking that you are less than you are. And as I thought about that, you know, it must have been tempting for John to simply embrace all the accolades and the praise and the attention that he was receiving. We all like to be looked up to. We all like to receive that positive attention. But John had both a humility about who he was in relation to his cousin Jesus and a confidence in the role that God had gifted him and called him to play in preparing the way for the Lord. He had a confidence in the role that he had been called to play and, and his part in God's plan for the world. And the video went on to suggest that when you are confident in, in yourself, and importantly, not overconfident, right? Appropriately confident, it is easier to humbly build others up. When you are confident in who God has called you to be and who God has claimed you to be, it is easier to humbly build others up because we aren't seeking to allay internal fears and insecurities because it is often those internal questions and fears, am I good enough? Am I whatever enough? That leads us to false bravado and sometimes manipulation of others. When we are confident in who God has called us and claimed us to be, we don't have to exaggerate our skills or our importance. We don't have to put others down in the hopes that it might make us feel a little bit better. Instead, we can look for a way to join in the family business that God has called us to. And that family business, of course, is the work of sharing God's love and life with all of those around us. And again, John the Baptist is a great example of this. He is confident in his role and his identity in the kingdom of God. Therefore, it isn't difficult for him to give all the credit away to Jesus, to point others to Christ, even as so many are looking to him. He doesn't waste time on building up his ego, and instead he uses his position and his voice to point others directly towards the true source of salvation and hope. Christ lived out his baptism every day. Every day as he taught us to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to care for the sick and the dying, to share the good news of hope and peace and love and joy with a hurting and broken world. And as people who bear his name, and we do if we claim the title of Christian, God calls us to live out our baptisms in the same way to care for the needy, to share the good news, to be light in the dark places in our lives and in our world. 
we too are baptized to a mission of welcoming and redeeming sinners, to invite others to know God's love and grace, of sharing God's light and love and life with all we meet each and every day. At, at the beginning of every baptism, if I'm doing it or whoever is doing the baptism, we say something like this. As we participate in this sacrament, let us remember with joy our own baptism. Now, most of us, most of us, if we were baptized as babies or even children, don't have any actual recollection of those moments. So what does it mean then to remember our baptisms? This, this phrase, remember your baptism, is simply a shorthand for remembering the truth that is proclaimed that was proclaimed in your baptism and is proclaimed every time we baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that you are God's beloved child. You are God's beloved child called and sent to make a difference in this world, claimed as God's own before you had anything to say about it. Baptism is conducted only once, but it was never intended to be a one-and-done event. Instead, it is something that we are to remember and to renew daily. So therefore, we remember our baptisms. Therefore, we claim our true identity every time with confidence and humility we share God's love. Every time we say yes to the call of God in our lives, we are remembering our baptism and proclaiming the truth that we are God's beloved children. Every time we allow the Holy Spirit of God to work in us and through us, we are living into the truth that was proclaimed at our baptism. So then, let us remember this and every day our baptisms and the truth of God's claiming that was proclaimed in them. Amen. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done.
Go in peace.